Hi everybody, welcome to the channel. I hope everybody is keeping well. So what are we doing today? So today we're going to be fitting the Denali Soundbomb split plug and play kit to my 2022 BMW R1250 GS. So this kit has been supplied to me free of charge very kindly by those good people at Nippy Normans. I'll put all the details down below and they've just asked me to do an installation video. So if we just jump onto the Nippy Normans website, they've got this kit on there for £99 and it was originally on there for £110. So the installation should take you no more than one hour and 30 minutes and the good news is it's an easy installation. All you need is a bit of patience, time, and a few tools. So Denali actually do two kits for the BMW R1250 GS slash GSA. One for those with the adaptive headlight and one for those without the adaptive headlight. So my GS has got the adaptive headlight, so that's the kit we're gonna be fitting today. So don't be afraid, order the kit and replace that standard OEM horn with something that generates 120 decibels of noise. And basically it's just a great safety feature for you, a motorcyclist. So what do we get in the kit then? So this is what we get in the kit. So there's quite a lot of stuff. It looks complicated, but it isn't. The main components are the compressor, the horn, the wiring loom looks complicated, but it isn't. And then we have a section of hosing which connects the compressor to the air horn. Now there's two ways that we can power this 20 amp compressor. So it takes a lot of power and you can't use the normal horn circuit. It just hasn't got enough power so what we have to do two ways we can either use the bike's battery and bring and bring that into play or we can use your hex easy can or your can smart system if you've got one of those so we're using the battery today so basically we'll use all of the wiring loom and then when you press the horn button on your bike that then flicks a little switch in the relay which then allows the battery to power the compressor directly which gives it enough oomph to generate the 120 decibels of noise that will come out of the air horn itself. So that's why we've got a relay, acts as a switch to bring the battery on the bike into play to drive the compressor. Now, if you're lucky enough to have a spare channel on your Denali Can Smart or your Hex Easy Can, you're gonna save yourselves about 45 minutes of wiring loom installation, and you'll just need a cable to go from the compressor back to your spare channel on your Hex Easy Can or Denali Smart Can. So, but if you haven't got a spare channel, then you're gonna to have to use the battery method and bringing the relay into play. So tools for the job then, these are the tools that I use. Torx T30 screwdriver, Torx T25 screwdriver, that's just for removing the panels from the bike, a normal screwdriver, set of pliers, snips, some blue medium thread lock, some extra cable ties for securing the wiring loom to the frame of the bike, a uh, torque wrench just up to a maximum of 21 newton meters and then a ratchet some tape for just securing onto the exposed metal ends of the wiring loom just so that we didn't scratch the frame as we pulled them through so that's what i've used the tape for and then finally just to fish the wiring loom through the side of the bike from one end to the other i just put a couple of zip ties together and that's always a very useful thing to have. So they are all the tools that I've used to fit that wiring loom to the bike for the plug and play installation. So how are we gonna fit all the stuff then? I'm gonna break it down into five sections really. So the first section is gonna be panel removal of the panels from the BMW. Second section is gonna be the wiring and the air hose installation onto the bike. Third section is gonna be mounting the air horn and the compressor Fourth section is gonna be connecting it all up. And finally, the bit that I'm really looking forward to is actually testing that 120 decibels of noise. So without further ado, let's go on to section number one, panel removal. So we've got eight panels to remove. I've actually taken all the torque screws out that I need to, and I've just left the odd torque screw in that just stops the panel falling off the bike. So let's crack on. So grab your Torx T25. So on this outer panel here on the left, we've got one, two screws to remove, and then three on the underside, and I'll show you a close-up video of that. So once that's done, it's just being held on by a male into a female kind of clip. So you just gotta give it a bit of a firm pull and you'll hear it click. So there we go, so it's off. And then we've got a female part here, which just sits on the male part here. So just give it a bit of a pull and go and put all the panels somewhere safe so you don't stand on them. 
So let's quickly talk about screw management. So that panel is now off and some of these screws have got shoulders, some haven't got shoulders. So what I do is I've just got a little picture of that panel on a bit of cardboard. And then when I take a screw out, I put it in the relevant position on that bit of cardboard. That way you're gonna put the right screw in the right hole. So yeah, screw management, highly recommend it. So now we're just gonna remove this section of the fairing. So Torx T25, that's the last one in here. These ones, folks, be very careful both removing and putting back, because if you slip with your screwdriver, you're gonna gouge your paintwork. So just be very careful and slow when you remove them and when you refit them. So as we've said, we've taken all the screws out already and I'll show you where those screws are. So we've got two on the top here and it's a mirror image, the same side, and then we've got one down here and then on the underside I've got the beak accessory on here so normally you've just got two screws on the underside here and this one has got three as you can see here so just undo all those screws and then once all the screws are off then all you need to do is just this is very flexible guys so just pull it out a little bit I've actually lowered my in off camera just to get it out of the way so you've got two pins that sit on this section here that come out and the fairing part here has got two lugs which mount the male pin, shall we call it. So a bit of a waggle, don't be afraid of it. And then just pull it out, just waggle it around a little bit. And it's just stuck on the, on the front section here. So a bit more effort, don't be frightened. All that creaking, don't be scared guys. And there we go. And then what you can do once it's now off, is just open it out and then just open it out so it just comes away from the front. So it is quite flexible. And just show you what I was talking about. So normally, if you haven't got this extension on the front, which I've got from BMW, so that extension just gives you this extra screw here. Normally you've just got those two screws. And when you put it back, it fits over here. And then when we put it back, it goes back like that. So you've just got to pull this bit to then get it over this section here. And then when you put it back, you can just open it out, feed it back. And then you've got two pins here, male pins, one here, one the other side, and they will be, they will go onto the lugs here. So you just have to do a little bit of waggling when you fit it. And that's that piece done. Go and put that somewhere safe. So we're just going to remove this piece of trim here two Torx T25s and again the other side's already, already been removed and my screw management a little picture here with the two Torx screws from the left hand panel and the other side the right hand panel I've done exactly the same so those screws are now out and basically you can just move it away and there's two pins on the back side of this bit of trim that are like that and they sit in two holes on this panel here so you've just got to pull this panel back and you'll hear it sort of pop out there we go and they're the male bits that I was talking about, and they sit in here and here. So that's where they slot in. So again, go and keep your panel safe. So what we're gonna do now is just remove this center section of tank trim. So you've got two Torx 25s down here, and then two here, and then you've got a Torx T30 screw in the middle behind the BMW. Uh, emblem here. So what I normally do with that one with my Torx T30 screwdriver or ratchet and socket, just pop it in there and then just undo it. But you don't have to take it out, just undo it fully and then just leave it in there and that will stay in there as you pull this trim piece away. It's going to make a bit of a pop so Again, don't be frightened of it. So start from the bottom and then just lift it up gradually. And we have a couple of male lugs along here and then we just got to pop those out. So just take your time, run your fingers on the underside and eventually as you go up, you can just pull it. And there we go, it's just popped off. And then when we lift it up, you'll see that that Torx T30 screw is still in there. So we can take that out and go and put that again in our screw management bit of cardboard. And just on the underside here, We've got a couple of lugs where it fits. I'll just try and work out where they are. So the main one is, the main one where it snaps, I think it's these two here. So they're the ones that sit in here. So that makes the popping noise when you pull it up and off the fuel tank. So that's the plastic fuel tank. Again, this is one you've definitely got to go and put somewhere safe. 
So the next thing we're going to do is remove both the left hand panel and the panel on the right hand side. So what you've got is you've got one, two, three, four Torx T25s. So I've already removed uh, three of those and I just recommend you leave the top one in for the time being because there's a little lug and pin down here near the behind the radiator that we've got to remove before we can actually take that panel off. So if you take all four off before you then do the one by the radiator, the risk is that the whole thing falls off. So just leave this top one on near the fuel cap. So the next thing we're going to do is just remove this plastic pin, which is behind the radiator on the left hand side. And you've also got one on the right hand side as well. So my preferred method of doing it is just with a small fine screwdriver. It's just insert the screwdriver in here and then with your hand, I don't know, don't know if you can see that with the light, is just insert it in the back and then just prise it out a little bit. And then what will happen is it'll, it'll come out so far that you can then get your fingers in here and then just pull it out. You can actually just use, if you want to yank it out with a pair of pliers, but then you run the risk of just sort of scuffing stuff. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that. Just use your fingers and eventually that pin will just pop out like that. So that's the pin that sits in there and you've got one the other side as well. And then that means that this panel here is now free. You might just have to waggle it a little bit. Yeah, so that's now free. So if I just put my fingers behind and then just pull this out from behind there, just to show you what you're looking at. So that goes through the plastic and then sits in the hole just here. And then when you come to reinstall it, put the panel back like that. And then you put that piece, let's do it so it looks better. Put that piece, having lined the holes up, push it through. And then with, with the plastic pin, just push it all the way in until you can't go any further. So that's it, that's the easiest way to do it. So what we can do now is just remove that panel. So now we've removed the plastic pin that sits behind the radiator. All we need to do now is just remove that top Torx T25 and this panel will just come away. So just make sure you don't drop it. There we go, and away comes the panel. So now that all the panels have been removed, obviously I haven't shown you the panels being removed on the right hand side of the bike because it's exactly the same as we've done on the left hand side of the bike. So we just got this infill panel to remove and the panel on the other side, which is the panel that covers the battery itself. So pretty straightforward, just another Torx T25. And then what we do, there's a male pin that comes up from the frame that this bottom corner uh, drops down onto. So just lift that up, there's the male pin. And then just be very careful here, a bit of a design flaw, I think, from BMW, uh, when there's a male pin on the back side of the top corner here, and that sits into a rubber grommet. So when you pull this out, it will just pop out. When you actually go to put it back, you want to make sure that you put your finger behind here and just hold on to that rubber grommet, because when you put it back, uh, it's very easy for it to pop out. So BMW really didn't do a good design job on that. And I've already had uh, the one on the other side, the battery charger, uh, disappear. So uh, they only cost pence, but it is a bit of a pain. So when you go to put it back, just put your finger in here to stop that rubber grommet uh, falling out and maybe put a bit of spit on there just to lube it up a little bit. So when you put, put this back, just slide the hole onto the top of the male pin, shall we call it, pop it down and then put the male part and just push it into the hole and just keep your finger behind that grommet to save it popping out. And then just put the Torx T25 in there and you're good to go. So this is what we're talking about, the rubber grommet, which sits in the hole here. So sometimes when you're pushing the panel in and out, it just pushes it out and then it drops and never to be found again. So that's happened on the uh, other side of the bike for my battery uh, case panel. So yeah, so just be careful of that. So just two more bolts to undo. So these are Torx T40, so just loosen those off. And all you want to be able to do is just lift this corner of this base plate up just to allow us, when we come to fit it, to put the relay under here. So that's where the relay is gonna sit. Don't worry if you see things under here that aren't on your bike. For instance, I've got the Hex Easy Can. This plate is to do with my uh, luggage system. And then I've got some extra cables for my Denali D3 lights and also my camera system, my Inov camera system on the bike. So don't panic if you see cabling on here, which is not on yours. So that's the prep work done. So let's start mounting the wiring loom. 
So we've now uncoiled the wire loom and it's fairly long. So let's have a quick look at it. So on one end, we've got the black connector module, which the relay will fit into once we get round to that. And then you've got three ends. So one end, which connects to the battery is colored red and black with a 30 amp fuse. And then how we power the compressor directly. So we've got another cable with a couple of flag connectors on the end and they will sit directly at the bottom of the compressor and the compressor unit will just be mounted here behind the left hand cylinder and then finally the other cable the third and final cable with a couple of spade connectors and those cables are blue in color and yellow well this cable actually will then feed up to the far right hand side of the bike in the area of the horn so what we're going to do now is with this cable and the plastic piping which drives the air horn from the compressor. We're gonna then feed these up behind the uh, air intake and to the top of the handlebars. So just to make things easier, I've just put those two zip ties that I threaded through each other. I put some red tape on them just so you can see where we're going. And then I've just taped those two zip ties around the top of the air tube and the spade connector electrical cable. So what we're gonna do now is just thread them behind the air intake and then I'm just gonna push this zip tie up here. So you've got two bolts there, just gonna push them up there until it pokes out the top. So just take your time. And if need be, just go up to the top and see where it's coming out. So that's now poked out through the top. And then what I'll do, I'll just get a camera angle just to show you where I've rooted it. So here we go then, that's the air hose, that's the electrical cable with the spade connectors on the end of it. So fed up behind the air intake, behind the radiator hoses here. And then if I just waggle it up here, you can see where they come out. So yeah, so just behind this plastic box up out the top. So when you feed them up out the top, you might just catch the top lip of the air hose on this section down here so if you're pushing up from down here and it ain't moving just come up to the top and it might be that the air hose just caught on this slip so looking at it from the underside then so there's the two cables here so up there so that's where they come out So I've just put some red tape around the air hose line so you can see you can follow it through so it goes between the frame tubing here then down through here and if we go down to the underside so what you need to do is just grab the end of the hose and then just pull about 10 inches or more through because what we need to do eventually when we come to do it is put the end of this onto the horn itself and then put that horn eventually onto the bracket which will sit up here but we need a little bit of excess to actually fit it nicely onto the horn and then we can pull the excess all the way back leaving a nice tidy finish. So what we're going to do next is fit the horn bracket to the front of the bike. So we've got the bracket itself, two new six millimeter bolts, a washer and a couple of sleeves and then we've got the horn unit itself and then that little bolt slides up here and then it's attached to the bracket itself with a rubber washer and then secured with a self-locking nut. So we're going to use potentially a six millimeter Allen key and then with a ratchet, a six millimeter bit to then go in there and tighten it up to, I think it's 19 Newton meters, but check your handbook. And then what we'll do is secure it all in with some medium strength blue thread lock. So next thing we need to do then is just mount the horn mount bracket onto the front here, but what we need to do is just remove the top Torx T40 and then we'll put the bracket on there with the new bolts. And then once that's on, we'll then remove the lower bolt and then put the second six millimeter Allen key bolt in. But obviously if we took both of these off at the same time, potentially the front fairing will actually fall forward. So that's the reason why we're gonna take one out at a time. So with a ratchet, I've just, with a Torx T40 bit, just undone the top bolt. So I'm gonna remove that and then get the new bolt and put that one in there with the new horn mount. So here's the horn mounting bracket. So we're just gonna put the top bolt in first. So we've got the bolt washer, bracket and the sleeve and I've got some blue thread lock on there. So just gonna hand tighten it into the top there. Just make sure it grips properly. So what I'm gonna do then with the six millimeter bit, I'm just gonna 
tighten this up just enough so that I can still have some movement with the bracket. And then what we're gonna do is just move the bracket sufficiently forward, just enough to allow me to remove the lower factory bolt. So here we are then, just gonna remove the lower factory bolt with a Torx T40, out it comes. So I'm just gonna line these holes up as best I can. And then I've got some thread lock, medium thread lock on the new bolt to go in. And then just put the spacer in there as well. So I've tried to put the spacer in between the frame and the new bracket, but I can't actually fit in, so it's too tight. So I've got no choice but to just back off the, this top bolt here. So let's just do that. So hopefully that will just give us a little bit more movement to be able to get that spacer in. So the front of the bike hasn't fallen off yet, so I'm just gonna move the bracket back, trying to line the holes up as best I can, and then just put this spacer up there. Now I've eased that top bolt off, there it goes, it goes in now. Thread it through. And look at that, in it goes. Why is that not grabbing? <sighs> okay, folks, a handy tip for you. I had problems with the lower bolt actually engaging, so it wouldn't go in. So what you need to do is actually push forward towards the bracket, and hopefully that will actually allow the, the bolt to engage. So it's actually engaged now. So yeah, if it, doesn't, if it doesn't catch, just push forward on the ratchet, and then it should go in. So the final job then is just to torque these up to a torque setting of 19 newton meters. There's one. There's two. Job done. So now that the whole mounting bracket is secure and torqued up to 19 newton meters to the frame there, so what we want to do now is just pull, feed and pull some of the air hose line out because you need to get the horn itself and then put the end of the hose onto the top here. And there's about 15 mil of hose that it will take. So that's why you've got to just pull it through to about where I am now and then just twist and push, twist and push. And you've got about 15 mil of hose to get on there. So I'm happy the hose is on now. So what we're going to do is just mount this to that bracket. So what we've got to do though is just pull back some of the hose, take up the excess, and then just pull it back through. But we'll tidy that up a little bit later. So now that we've fitted the hose to the horn, we'll then put it on the bracket. So what we have is a little bolt that just slides into the groove here. And then on top of that bolt, we have a rubber washer. It's sort of triangular wedge shaped, and the wedge goes into the groove. And then what we need to do is just put the bolt into the lower hole on the bracket. I've actually found if you look through the gap uh, beneath the right hand indicator, you'll get a better view and you can see where the hole is. And as you move the air horn up, you might just have to push some of the hose up towards the handlebars to give you the ability just to marry the bolt up with the hole. So it's a little bit of a faff, I've got to say. So that's in, and let's get the self-locking nut. So that's gonna go on there. If you wanted to put some thread lock on there, you could do, but this is a self-locking nut. So that's a 10 mil nut, which we're gonna secure with a 10 mil spanner. So there we go, that's nicely secured to the mounting bracket. And then what we just wanna make sure is on the top here that the hose is not snagged and it's not twisted. So that folks is the air horn secure to the bracket and I've just pulled the top of the hose all the way back. What I did notice was there was a, a bit of a, a bend in the uh, hose here. So if you find you've got a bit of a bend or a crease in the tube, just press it together with your uh, finger and thumb just to get that bend out of it. And then this is where it's finally ended up. So it's just rooting over the top of the unit itself and then we'll have a look from the top side just to see where it comes out. And the area when we fitted it, what I was looking through was this area here, just to give me a good sight to lining up the uh, hole with the bracket when we were fitting the horn. So that's a good spot. So there we go, I put some red tape on the hose itself so you can see the way it's been routed. So that's the final routing of the hose. So what we're going to do next is attach the compressor mounting bracket to the crankcase here. So we have to remove two Torx bolts and they are Torx T30 
30. So I've just put a bit of tape on here just in case you slip and scratch your crankcase. So the top one, there's not much space there. So I haven't got a particularly small socket and ratchet set. So I've just used a 10 mil spanner, ring spanner and a T30 bit. And then I'm just gonna undo that. So that's how you can undo that if you haven't got the space with your ratchet. So they're only done up to 12 newton meters anyway. And then the same for the bottom one as well. Uh, again, this just makes it a little bit easier if you haven't got a small enough ratchet set to fit in this gap here. So remove those and then we'll mount the bracket. So that's them removed, not very long, they're about two and a half centimetres. So what we're going to do now is mount the compressor onto the bracket. So by far the easiest way is to do this before the bracket actually gets put on the bike. And then all we do, just pop the M8 14mm bolt through there, put the 14mm self-locking nut on there as well and then just push that forward and then pop that onto there and this is the easiest way to do it folks and then take your 40 mil spanner and then just do it up and just use your finger just to stop that bolt sliding down and let's put this on the bike so there's one compressor and then we just use our m6 30 millimeter screws and then we just fit them onto the crankcase and again we've put some blue medium strength Loctite on them that's the first one on hand tight there's the second one they should be torqued up to 12 newton meters that's the bmw torque setting for the crankcase or the default setting as per the denali instructions is nine newton meters i haven't got a torque wrench that will fit in here so i'm just going to use an allen key and then do them up nice and snug and obviously you want to make sure you don't round the heads so just be very careful right there's one happy with that and there's two so nice and secure and if you do need to tighten this up at a later date you can get your 13 mil ring spanner in the back there to uh, tighten that up if required a bit of paper off and i haven't scratched anything always a good result Just pull that sufficiently up and towards the right hand indicator, just enough for us to connect to the horn on the other side of here. So Denali actually give you two options as to how to wire the harness in. Option one means that the OEM horn uh, won't be able to be used. And option two means that the OEM horn still is able to be used. The downside with option two is that you have to do a little bit of wire cutting and use posi taps. So I'm not going to use that option. I'm going to go with option one, which basically means that the horn or the OEM horn, or in my case, my mini sound bomb is actually uh, disconnected from the bike circuitry. So when you press the horn button, in my case, the only horn that will sound is the sound bomb at 120 decibels. So this is the OEM horn and you can see the connector input there. And then I've actually got the mini sound bomb connected which has got the BMW adapter up here. So I've actually unplugged it from the bike's uh, horn circuit. So this is the plug that we're gonna be connecting to. And this one here, what I'll do, I'll just put some tape over the top of that just to make it weatherproof. So if the compressor fails down the road somewhere or the relay fails, then I can just take the tape off there here and then just connect it to the bike's horn circuitry and I'll still have a horn. But this is by far the easy option because there's no cutting of wires involved whatsoever. Now open this packet from the wiring kit inside. That is the Denali wiring adapter for the BMW. There's a little bit of a notch kind of thing on the top here. That side is nice and smooth. That side's got the notch or whatever you want to call it. And then I've already identified by laying it flat on the bench that the wire on the left is the positive wire and that's why I've put a little bit of tape on it. So this is the cable we're interested in. As you can see, we've got the uh, release mechanism here. So we're gonna get, get the Denali harness and then with the, the notched end, as we call it, and the positive wires on the left-hand side, as I've already said, we're gonna insert it into the horn bikes plug. So there we go. Just pop it in there and push it in and you might hear it click, or you might not. There we go, it's just clicked a bit. So that's now connected, but we've now disconnected the bike's horn, or in my case, the Denali horn from the bike circuitry, so the horn won't work. But the benefit is we don't have to do any cutting of wires using any posi taps, etc. 
So my mini sound bomb cables are tucked out of the way and all you need to do now is just feed these two ends up through the gap here. There we go. Let's see what it's like from the other side. So this is the cable having pushed it through so you can see where it's come through and then we've got the silver tape removed from the spade connectors which is the horn wiring harness. So as I said before I've just put a bit of red tape on the yellow cable which is positive and we're just going to push positive to positive and then we'll just tidy all this up. So that's the spade connectors fully inserted and then just make sure that clear protective sleeve covers all of the joint. So this is how I've run the horn harness. I've just put some red tape on that harness just for ease of reference. So you can see it's a nice install and then it just runs towards the other side there, which we'll get to in a moment. And in relation to zip tying, yeah, I've just zip tied it to the existing uh, wiring itself. So one up here, another one there, and then the final one this side it's just down there and obviously I've got to cut those zip ties but all the panels do fit I've tried it and there's no snagging whatsoever and from the other side then it will just tuck under the Torx T30 bolt there and then it drops down together with the air hose and then I've just actually zip tied it on this side to the air hose itself and there's full and free movement on the handlebars as well again no snagging and all the panels fit properly so this is the final run for the air hose. We don't have to cut any of the air hose, which is great. So just again, for ease of identification, cut some red tape and put it on the air hose line. So it's running along the top here, so it's not snagging on any of the front suspension mechanism. And then it just goes beneath the bracket here. And then between the fuel tank and the mounting bracket for the side panel here. And then this is my Denali light so that you won't have that on your bike unless you've got Denali lights. And then it runs down and then to the left here. So around this bit here. So it's not going to be rubbing on the front suspension part. And then down the bracket. So po poke the end of the tube down. And then what you're left with is the end here. And then we've just got to push that onto the compressor itself and then that is job done. So just make sure that you pull as much of it through as you can so there's no saggy bits that are going to catch on anything. And then at the bottom here, just make sure you get enough of the hose onto the compressor because you don't want it blowing off. That is job done. So there's actually a black cap that I didn't realise was in the kit, didn't tell me about it on the mounting instructions and that goes on the nut at the back there. So if you've got small fingers, you can put it on now and I would strongly recommend you put it on before you actually mount it onto the uh, bike itself. The black cap just finishes that and then I've just put a zip tie on the air hose just beneath the bung here. So then I'll trim that as well. So we're going to talk about the horn wiring loom. I've just put some green tape on it so you can see where it goes. So basically it follows the air hose and then we go above the bracket here or behind that bracket and then down and then behind my Denali plug. And then basically it just sits beneath the tank and we'll just push it the other side of this frame together with my Denali uh, cable as well. And then we'll come up here and then I'll just zip tie it to here and then to the back of the bike. Get the end of the wiring loom and this only goes in one way so there we go so just pop that in there give it a good old push so just going to put some tape around there just to stop any sort of water getting in there when you're cleaning the bike etc you don't have to but i will and then the reason we undid these two bolts was so we can lift this up and then just pop the relay with the writing face in that way down here And there we go, that's in. So we're about 10 minutes from finishing the installation, which is brilliant. So that's the relay nicely tucked out of the way. And then I've just secured the air hose and the horn harness just with a couple of zip ties. So as you can see here, just behind this bracket here and just a little zip tie there. So they're not going to move anywhere. And obviously the wiring harness for the horn is not going to impede any screw that goes through there. So I'm not going to puncture that harness. And then it runs under here and then over and then a zip tie to my other cables here. But you could, at the start of, the, at the start of all this, you could have actually run this cable 
down on the inside here, but I've got a GPS for my uh, in-of camera system mounted there, so I couldn't fit it through, hence why I'm running it over there. So zip tie there, and then I've just put another zip tie for the air hose down here, so it doesn't come out from there. So what we need to do then is just finally with this other harness, and that's the harness that goes to the underside of the compressor. And this has got some special connectors called flag connectors. Now I haven't got the crimping tool required to take those off. So if you wanted to shorten the cable and you've got the flag connectors, uh, which we've got in the kit, but I haven't got the crimping tool, then you could simply cut to length and put the new connectors on. Well, I haven't got that and I suspect many of you folk haven't got it. So what we're going to do is run this cable behind the uh, air inlet here and then round the back of the frame tubes, zip tie those, then back down again and then plug them in on the underside. So I'll route that now and I'll show you what I've done. So let's talk about the harness to the compressor. So I just put a little bit of electrical tape on the harness and it's green tape. So just for ease of reference. So here we go, so just threaded it through and then over here and then we're going to go through there and then the other side of the radiator hose, you can see the green tape, so behind the frame tube here and then back around again, again behind the radiator tube, behind the air inlet and then this is the return cable and then what we're left with is the connectors for the compressor. I had to just cut about three centimeters back of the sleeve because it actually wouldn't fit properly onto the underside of the compressor. So if you've got a similar thing, you find it hard to get these flag style uh, connectors onto the bottom of the compressor, you may just have to cut about three or four centimeters of the uh, outer sleeve back. And this is, I think it's stamped to 105 degrees centigrade it will take. So the orange cable is the positive cable. So I've just reminded myself with a little bit of tape on there. So basically what we've got to do is just on the underside, connect those to the positive and the minus. So let's do that now and we're nearly done. So I need to get some black electrical tape. So I've put red tape on, that's the only stuff I've got. But orange uh, is positive and then black is negative. So let's put that on the underside and it is quite awkward. And again, I'll put some black tape on there when I've got some from the shop. So this is the final installation of all the cabling on this side of the bike. So I've put six zip ties just to secure the wiring loom going to the compressor. So here we go then folks. So, and I've tried putting the seat back on and it doesn't foul anything at all. So it is a good installation. So first zip tie is here. And again, I might have cables that you haven't got on your bike, but that's the relay stuff, all nice and secure. And then I just put some green tape for the compressor loom going that way and the green tape will take us all the way to the front tube here and then it will loop around the front tube and back and it goes from green to red just to let you know. So let's follow that green cable as we say. So there we go, it comes out behind the cables here and up and then we've got another zip tie and that zip ties the cable going that way to the cable coming this way. So we've got to cut those and then as we go up, we're not snagging anything, it goes behind the air filter, or the air inlet, sorry. And then behind the radiator hose, there we go, green, behind the tube here, the frame, and then green gets to the tube, and then it changes color to red for ease of reference. And then we've got another zip tie, there's a hole here, and then just put the zip tie up there. And then there's the red bit going that way. So we've just zip tied them both together again. So they're not going to go anywhere. They're not going to snag on the front suspension or anything like that. And then following the compressor loom uh, in red. So there we go, it's coming up. And just use a zip tie and just looped it around the uh, air hose and the other cable there as well, going up to the uh, horn. So that's the horn loom. And then it comes back down here. That's the other zip tie. So they're connected together again and then back down and then down the bracket, uh, zip tie at the bottom and then the flag connectors on the underside. And obviously what we have to do is just cut these six zip ties and then we'll go and do the battery cable. Yay, nearly finished. So this is the last thing to do. So we're gonna put the 
battery cable onto the battery. First thing to do is just pop open the fuse cover. And there's a 30 amp fuse in there and we'll just take the fuse out with your pliers and then just go and put that somewhere safe. And then what we're gonna do is just feed the black cable, that's the negative, just put a zip tie through there just to feed it through the back of the frame. Just waggle it around and there we go. So that's come through first time. So just take it through very slowly and that's that one through. And then the same for the positive and then pull it through. Again, this takes minutes folks to do. So just take your time, hopefully not put too many scratches in the frame. So what this also allows is to give you uh, access to the fuse if you need to when you're out and about. So we can get rid of that, we don't need that anymore. So what we need to do is just disconnect. Firstly, there's the right order to do it. Take the negative off, which is the one on the left. And then there is a positive in here on the other side of the battery, but everybody uses this connection point here on the positive, which is actually if you want to jump start the bike. So we're going to take the negative off first, very important, so we avoid the risk of shorting anything out. So that's a star screwdriver. And again, I've already got two terminals on there, so I may just have to remove some of the washers that are on there. So when I put that nut or the screw back, it will uh, grip. There we go, that's all disconnected. Torx T25 and do that. And again, this is normally used when you want to jump start the bike, but everybody connects the positive to this terminal. It's just easier than taking the battery out. Just be careful you don't drop it. So that's it out now. So with your positive battery end, just reconnect it all and just try to avoid any twists and things. So just try and get it so it's as best as you possibly can. So put the other positive connectors back on. I've got quite a few in there. Just make sure they're all in the hole, which they are, and secure that up nice and tight. So that's now nice and secure and just making sure that we keep this hole clear. There should be a rubber grommet in there, but most BMWs, when you put this panel back, it pushes the rubber gr grommet out, but they are pence, as we mentioned many times before. So we can still get access to the fuse hole up there, which is great. So what we need to do now is just put the negative terminal back with all the other bits that we had in there previously. So there we go. Screwdriver, and then just screw them down. Again, try and get it so it's all nice and not too much stress on anything other than yourself. And that's nice and secure. So everything is nice and tidy and just readjust the wires if you need to. And then we'll just offer up the battery panel just to make sure it fits and it does. So that's not a problem, everything's good. And then final thing to do is just pop the fuse in. So there we go. And just you put the fuse into the fuse holder. So just push it in. And that's in, and what we do, we just try the horn, see if it works. Everything's plugged in where it should be. Oof, yep. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> Why does everybody laugh the first time they press the horn button with that? That is crazy. <laughs> so everything works. It's a very loud horn, excuse me laughing. So what we're gonna do now is just zip tie this. So just gonna pop the red cap back on. And then what we'll do, we will put this battery cover back on. And then that's just a Torx T25. So Torx T25, bosh, job done. So we're just gonna push that in there and then secure this with a zip tie. So just gonna secure it under there so we don't put a screw through it when we put the panel on, that's fine. And then the other zip tie, I'm just going to put through the hole here, out the frame hole there, and then we'll zip it, and then we'll just trim them. So finally, we'll just give them a trim. One, two, job done. Let's have a look what we've done. So this is the final installation, folks. That is the last thing to do. So that's the battery cable then. Again, I've got things in here you might not have on your bike. So zip tie to the frame here, and then another zip tie just below here and then we still got access to the fuse down here and that is everything done so quite a nice neat installation 
So just remember to do these two screws up to 21 newton meters and then we'll refit all the panels in reverse order and then hopefully no screws will be left in your screw management system. So here's the bike all back together then. That took about 20 minutes and here's the compressor. It's a nice neat install with no cable shown other than that to the compressor unit. Here's the bike from the front looking at the compressor wiring loom and there's no snagging there whatsoever. The battery side is all well and good, again looking nice and tidy. Here's the underside of the compressor and with a special flag crimping tool you could easily tidy this up. That's really my only criticism here. So the compressor is actually in that position kept out of most of the weather I suspect and there's no issues with using the gear selector either. And finally